morning, Saints. It's the first day of the new year. Wow. 2019. 2019. It's man, unreal, oh, man, it? it is. It is. It's absolutely unreal. Unreal. <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. And yeah. God is good. This is the King's Road broadcast here on Spreaker. And also, we put these up on YouTube as the Lord leads. I'm glad you could join us today to be encouraged and strengthened in the Word, be challenged, and be reminded that we are to earnestly contend for the faith. Okay, we talked about that yesterday. We'll go over that a little bit and then get back into this book of Jude right here. Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Father, for preserving all of us in 2018. And we thank you right now in advance, Lord, for all the preservation you're going to give us in 2019. All the leading, all the guiding, all the supplying, everything that you're going to do with your people. This year, Lord, we bless you, we praise you, and worship you, Lord. You know what this year holds, Lord. You know the judgments you're bringing to this earth and to this wicked, vile system of Babylon, Lord. And to this, quote, church that goes by your name, Lord, but then their hearts are far from you. You know what you're going to do, Father. Lord, we pray you keep us understanding and discerning exactly what you're doing this year. That you would shower us, O oh God, with your unction this year in a fresh and new way, Lord, that we've never experienced before. That we would see those exploits being done by your hand, O oh God, through all of your children throughout the earth. And, O oh God, that you would be exalted in our hearts today, we pray. And every day of this new year, Lord, we bless and praise you and thank you. We glorify you. We just want to spend our days, Lord, all the tasks that we have to do, we want to do them as unto you and just worship you in everything, Father, and bless your holy name. Keep our eyes fixed on you, knowing that as we keep our gaze upon you, Lord, you will keep us in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Keeping our minds stayed upon you, Lord, and crush the serpent dragon under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're back in the book of Jude, like I said. So let's read the first three verses there, honey. And this is what we were talking about yesterday. And then we're going to pick it up at verse 4 and start talking about how this has happened. Happened in the first century. And it's even more prevalent today than it was then. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, this is Jude, chapter 1. Verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Mm. We talked about yesterday about how contending means to strive, to oppose, yes. to struggle. Struggle. It's a struggle. I mean, you're earnestly contending for the faith, okay? <coughs> you speak the truth in love. Amen? Yeah, and sometimes that, <coughs> there's a thing involved there that we have to stand right in the midst of all the darts and the darts, the archers, the arrows. That's right. That's <laughs> we right. have to stand there in the midst of that. That's a struggle. Amen. Sometimes. Amen. It is. But as we stand, hey. We have the victory. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So they were denying the Lord by their lasciviousness, okay? Their lasciviousness. They were pretending to be Christians, but yet they were denying the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Denying him by their actions, okay? And they crept in. Unawares. Unawares. And what does that mean? They came in sneakily is how they came in. You see that word lasciviousness in, in the Webster's Dictionary? Looseness. Irregular indulgence of animal desires. Wantonness. Lustfulness. Okay. 
Just debauchery. Debauchery. Yeah. Okay. Tendency to excite lust and promote irregular indulgences. Okay. Irregular feeding yourself. You know, making yourself feel good all the time. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's a, they were coming in as a poison. Okay. And Gil was talking about, I was reading this morning how they would, they would neglect the poor. The love feast in the first century was a time when the saints would gather together two, three times a week or however many times and have a big meal. And it was mainly for the poor, the poor that didn't get a lot to eat. They would bring them in and feed them, you know what I mean? And they would love on them and love them. You see what I'm saying? But then these certain men crept in unawares would come in and they would push the poor out. You see? Push them out and, and neglect them. See? And and because of their lust, they wanted all the food for their mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. You see? And listen, the Bible says we're side by side in the body of Christ. We're one with another. Hallelujah. We're all... Filled with the Spirit of God, we're bone of Jesus' bones. Hallelujah. See? That's what the Bible teaches us. And we are to be receiving of all the brethren, hallelujah, who are truly filled with the Spirit and walking in righteousness with the Lord. Hallelujah. The true body. The true body of Christ. Because there is a false body that's out right. there. There are false Christians out there. <coughs> And that's what we're talking about right here. These false mm -hmm. teachers. They crept in unawares. Now, verse 5. This is so important. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, had, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. See, everybody that came through the water was saved. That water speaks of the baptism. Okay, that's what Paul wrote. And they were all saved. All of them made it to the other side. But then began their journey in the wilderness. Okay. And during the first two years, the people were complaining and murmuring and, and, and really the whole time. But this was the big time when they were. And after two years, okay, God began to destroy. During that time, he began to destroy those who were not believing they were not agreeing with the truth Rebellious. that god was revealing to moses they would not be obedient to the truth and god destroyed them in the wilderness see he destroyed those that believed not he saved them all but then he destroyed those who believe not and today many people they get saved and then they neglect their salvation they turn away from the truth of the Lord because the way is hard. They turn away from the truth of the Lord because they're not making as much money as they could make walking like the world. You see what I'm saying? They make less money walking with the Lord because they don't get the promotion. They don't get, you see what I'm saying? Something will happen. And so they turn away from the Lord and they go their own way. Well, Korah was an example. Exactly. Now he went through, he got through, didn't he? Yeah. With the rest of them guys. That's right. But he's an example to this because he was all to his self, man. His flesh, that was it. That's what he was thinking of, whatever. He wanted you know, notoriety. He wanted the notoriety. He wanted to be noticed and to be the head, yeah, right. of the people. That's right. Well, what happened? He rebelled. He was in rebellion. That's why he was acting like that. And he was in unbelief. That's why he was acting like that. And so what happened? God destroyed him. And Dathan, and his Abraham, whole, the whole family. The whole group that were rebelling and doing that against Moses, he destroyed every one of them and their families and their children, the whole thing. The earth swallowed them up and then closed back over. I mean, there was like nothing left. Exactly. You know, this. what we're fixing to read here, this is like God has preserved this word for today's church. Because God wants people to know. I mean, when, when, when the today's church reads this, it, they read it like a history lesson. Okay? And it's not a history lesson, saints. It is in a sense that God's describing the history of people in the past. But it's for, for our what? In sample, right? For example, for us, that if we be like the people of the past, okay, 
who rebelled against God and turned away from God and didn't do what God said, like the children of Israel in unbelief, mm -hmm. okay, and set up idols in our heart and, and treat the things of the Lord frivolously, okay, where it's just really, you know, I'm saved and that's good enough. No. No. You got to get saved. And when you truly are saved, you want to go all the way with Jesus. Whatever he wants you to do. Everything he tells you, you want to be obedient. You you desire, you hold his commandments in high regard. You say, yes, Lord, I want to keep your commandments. See, I want to walk with you in white, Lord. Yes. I want to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and love my neighbor as myself. Amen. Yeah, we got to get him written on the heart. Because when the commandments are written in our heart the way he says they are. That's right. That means they are part of us. Amen, amen. And they are not grievous to keep. It's something that's part of our life, right. part of our character. And we want to keep it. And we just do. That's right. It's just a natural thing to do it. <coughs> when they're written on the heart, and God has done that inward working. Right, exactly. Hallelujah. So begin to read now, verse 6. Let me see here. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto, unto the, the judgment, judgment of, of the, the great, great day. day. Now, what does that mean? The angels which kept not their first estate. Their first estate was a job that God created them to do. Okay? Whatever that job was. God created them angels, okay? They were in a celestial place in heaven, okay? They they were at a certain level. They kept not that estate, okay? Now, we are born anew and filled with the Spirit of God. We're all saved. If you're saved today, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. We have an estate. We have a place where God has placed us, okay? And a work for God, for God that he wants us to do. And that means surrender to him, be obedient to him, and be moved by his spirit to accomplish what he wants to do through us in this earth. You know, that's also an example right there. The, the fallen angels. Right. They, they, they left their first estate. And why? Whose influence were they paying attention the to? Devil. The Satan. devil. The devil. Right. That's amazing to me that he could have so much influence over them. But he was zooming in there to whatever was there that shouldn't have been there. And they turned. They turned away. God gave them a will. It, the will. That's the deal. And that's the same today. It doesn't matter how angelic a person can be. And walking in the ways of the Lord or whatever. And then they start listening to the devil's voice. Right. The false teachers. You know, the false doctrine and the false stuff. And they're, because of something in them, there's something there in them already. Right. The old nature. You know, that is drawing them to that error. That's right. And so then because they desire to be lifted up, they desire for people to come to them and be recognized and all this because they desire that and want that. They listen to the it devil. It comes back to this. Let's just they talk They listen about to the devil and then they fall. And then what happens? Just like Satan. He did that. He fell. He was jealous. You know, whatever, you know, prideful, whatever. And he fell. Well, it's the same now. And people prideful, jealous. And they fall, they fall into error. And then what do they do? Just like Satan, they draw others into that error. That's right. That's right. Look so right. that's a satanic characteristic to draw others into into error right it is and the reason people fall into error after they're saved and filled with the spirit is because they do not hold the truth in righteousness okay one thessalonians second thessalonians chapter two okay because they held not the truth in righteousness god turned them over to a strong delusion they left their first estate you see what i'm saying they left it because the way is too hard or they don't want this verse right here for the preaching, the word of the cross, 
is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That's where it starts. That's where it finishes. Right there. You come to the cross. We come to the cross. All of us as the body of Christ daily. We die to self. We refuse to walk in the way of fallen man. Okay? We're all tempted, yes. But we don't have to give in to the temptation. We can submit to God, resist the devil, and watch the devil flee. Amen. You know, people that God's let be deceived, mm -hmm. that he's because they didn't hold the truth. In righteousness. In righteousness. And well, it so goes deeper than that, dear. He's let them be. He's turned them over to that delusion because of that. They don't think they're turned over to a delusion. Look, it goes deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Look, look, look. I'll read the verse right here. It's deeper than that. Look at this. Okay. Verse 9 of chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians. Even him who's coming is after working after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Hmm. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Hmm. Mm. That's pretty that, serious. That, that's serious. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And it's the lie, okay? They can make it on their own. They are their own God. That why why would God do that? They all might be damned, mm. who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, it's an unrighteous thing to turn away from the Lord. And He's true. Yeah. It's unrighteousness. Yeah. I mean, if things get hard for my wife and I, and we just don't we're, we're tired of the hard way. What would happen if we turned away from God? Mm. We would be in so much trouble. It always draws us closer to the Yeah, well, I'm thanking God for that. I'm thanking God for that. I'm thanking God for that. Yeah. See? That's the way it should That's be. That's right. Actually. That's right. And 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 so we see these. Read that verse again in Jude, honey. Verse 6. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation... He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And really, see, and it was like, worse what they did. Yeah, it, it, absolutely, because they yeah, were they were they, looking at the glory. Right. And look, listen, if I turn away from the Lord, okay, and say he's not real and just walk away from the Lord and just live like hell, see, what am I doing? I'm leaving my first estate. God has a plan for all of our lives. God had us. He knew us before the foundation of the world. He knew us in his son. And if I rebel against that, if I, if I fall away by my own choice, God wouldn't push me away. It would be my choice. See? Then what would happen to me? If I blaspheme the Holy Spirit, what would happen to me? I'll be in everlasting chains. You see? Just like these evil spirits that fell under darkness and wouldn't be able to come back. If a person blasphemed the Holy Spirit, they can't turn back to God. Well, they're evil now. They're gone. They were angels, holy angels, but they're... They're evil. evil. They evil left. Now. They they decided to be. Yeah, I know. See? It's so bad. Yeah. It's, it's unreal. You can't understand how that could happen. And we might say, somebody might say, well, that's, that's talking about the angels. Okay, listen. Jude is writing to the church. Telling them, if this can happen to the angels, okay, you better watch you better out. Watch out yeah. Okay, don't entertain false teaching. Don't don't go that route. Amen. Now, verse seven, he picks it up. See, <coughs> he says they're kept in everlasting chains under dark under the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to, to fornication. fornication. Okay. Giving themselves over, over to it. To fornication. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that is there. Utterly unchaste. Right. You know, libertine to do whatever I want to do. And going after strange flesh. The men were going after the men. 
See? are set forth for an example, suffering the, the vengeance, vengeance of, of eternal, eternal fire. fire. Now, fire. what verse is that again? That's verse 7, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check this out. I read this yesterday. I'm going to read it again today. And this is, you know, right here, John Gill. And he says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, Adma and Zeboam and Zoar were spared. Okay, this is a third instance of God's vengeance on sinners, and which, like that of the Israelites and of the angels, was after great favors had been enjoyed. These places were delightfully situated. Now think about America and very fruitful as the garden of God. They were under a form of government, had kings over them, and had lately had a great, very great deliverance from the kings that carried them captive, being rescued by Abraham. They had a righteous lot among them, who was a reprover in the gate. And Abraham made intercession for them with God. But they, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, not as the angels who are not capable of sinning in such a manner, though the Jews make this to be a sin of theirs, and so interpret Genesis 6-2, but rather the Israelites among whom this sin prevailed, okay, 1 Corinthians 10-8, though it seems best of all to refer it to the false teachers, okay, that turned the grace of God into lasciviousness and were very criminal this way, Gill says. Okay, and then the sense is that in like manner as they, the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, gave themselves over to the sin of fornication, wherefore these men might expect the same judgments that fell upon them, since their sin was alike. What happened which to Sodom and Gomorrah? Totally burnt. Now listen to this. This mm -hmm. is powerful here. <clears throat> okay, which sin is a work of the flesh, contrary to the law of God is against the body and attended with many evils exposes to judgment here and hereafter and unfits unfits for the communion of the saints and for the kingdom of heaven and going after strange flesh or other flesh not meaning okay meaning not other women besides their own wives but men and designs that detestable and unnatural sin which from these people is called sodomy to this day. Now, Gill wrote this in 1600s, okay? Wow. Now, it is prevalent today, okay? Okay. And which is an exceeding great sin, contrary to the light of nature and law of God, dishonorable to human nature, and scandalous to a nation and people, and commonly prevails where idolatry and infidelity do, as among the Papists and Mahometans, and arose from idleness and fullness of bread in Sodom, and was committed in the sight of God with great impudence, their punishment follows, are set forth for an example, being destroyed by fire, Gill says, from heaven and their cities turned into a sulfurous lake. Sulfurous lake. And then listen to this, which continues to this day. He wrote this in the 1600s. Wow. Okay. As a monument of God's vengeance and an example to all such who commit the same sins and who may expect the same equitable punishment and to all who live ungodly lives, though they may not be guilty of the same crimes, and to all that slight and reject the gospel revelation with whom it will be more intolerable than for Sodom and Gomorrah, and to Antichrist, who bears the same name and spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, and particularly to all false teachers, who besides their strange doctrines go after strange flesh, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, which may be understood of that fire with which those cities and the inhabitants of it were consumed, which Philo, the Jew, says, burnt till his time, and must be burning when Jude wrote this epistle in the first wow. century. Wow. Isn't that something? That's something, okay. The effects of which still continues, the land being now brimstone, salt, and burning. I don't know if you've ever seen the video with Ron Wyatt, when he found Sodom and Gomorrah. He lights a and, piece of it. Yeah, they, he took a piece of that sulfur. Mm -hmm. They put it in a spoon, just a regular kitchen spoon, teaspoon. 
and they lit it with a lighter on fire, and that thing burned, and it burned a hole right in the spoon. Mm. Okay? That's sulfur. Mm. It's still, I mean, I'm telling you right now, hallelujah. It's a hot fire. He says here, <coughs> the effects of which still continues, continues the land being now brimstone, salt, and burning, and is an emblem and representation of hellfire, between which there is a great likeness, as in the matter of them both being fire, and in the efficient cause of them both from the Lord, and in the instruments thereof, the angels, who, as then, will hereafter be employed in the delivery of the righteous and in the burning of the wicked, and in the circumstance attending both suddenly at an unawares were not thought of and expected, and in the nature of them being a destruction total, irreparable, and everlasting. Mm. And this agrees with the sentiments of the Jews who say that the men of Sodom have no part or portion in the world to come and shall not see the world to come. Okay, wow. And I'm telling you right now, there's many believers who profess the name of Jesus who will not see the world to come. Because Jesus will say to them in that day, I never knew you. Right. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, doing your own thing. Saints, let us not be of that company. Let us be of the company of those who say, Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Amen? Yeah, boy, I had a I real grieving in my spirit. You know, even as I watched this fire in this fire, little fireplace, eternal flame, eternal burning forever and ever, and, and a person is not ever going to get out of hell. That's right. It's just like the angels... That have ch eternal <coughs> chains. They're never going to get out of it. A person thinks that there's no hell. Well, the Bible says there is, and there That's is. That's right. That's right. There is. And there is. And it's eternal. That's right. It's not like the universalists believe that you're going to get out of there. No, you're not. If you go there, you are not getting out of there for eternity. That's right. And that fire burns and very hot. Very hot. Forever. It's an eternal torment. You know, and, and why go there? The Lord is reaching out his hand right now, even in this hour. And he will up until the time he closes that spiritual door of Amen. the ark. Amen. Hallelujah. And pleads and pleads and pleads with people to come. So if they go, it's their choice to go to hell. It's right. not because the Lord hasn't sent people. And right now, even right now. That's right, that's right. Even right now. Look, verse 8. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Mm -mm -mm. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast, in those things they corrupt themselves. Do you see the debauchery of human <coughs> nature, how, how it can go to the depths of that? If it's just allowed to run and people don't repent and they just keep on in that lifestyle, you see the degradation that it can go to? Woe unto them. Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain. In the way of Cain. Hmm. And ran greedily after the, after the error of Balaam. of Balaam. For reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Who you were talking about earlier. Korah. And um, see, the gainsaying of Korah. I mean, it was like, hey, we're holy too, you know. This is what they were saying, yeah. basically. Who do you think you, you know, are, You Moses? think you, I mean, hey. Yeah. They were Levites, okay. 
but they were not of the of Aaron's tribe, okay? They were not of Aaron's family. The family of Aaron were the priests who administered the tabernacle. I mean, they offered the incense. They offered the sacrifices, not just the regular Levites. The regular Levites, they had to take everything apart, take down when the, when the pillar of fire moved, they took down all the badger skins and rolled everything up and put it in and carried everything through the desert, okay? The Levites carried the Ark of the Covenant. They did not They did not minister to the Lord. The Aaronites did, okay? And Aaron's sons. But two of Aaron's sons, they went when they weren't told and offered, and it was strange fire, and God killed them. See? Mm. See, it's important. When you read the Word of God, you have to look at these examples from the Old Testament. We can't go out of ourself. As good as it might seem or look, we cannot go out of ourselves and do something for the Lord because the Lord will not bless it. The, right. the Lord will not be in it. Right. We have to wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the thing that I, in my own personal walk with the Lord and sharing together, I believe, and, and I know it to be true, the Lord wants us to praise Him and worship Him and love Him, first of all. And then seek Him. Amen. And his word. And we're seeking him when we're worshiping him too. Amen. And and then as we do this, he reveals his will to us. Here's what I want you to do today. Here's what I want you to do, Lord. Here's when we first got married, we both had really good jobs and, and the Lord revealed to us, I want you to start your own business. So we did, right? And so he revealed it was just a revealing and then he was a conf confirming the word and everything he was doing, right? And then after a few years of that, you know, four, five, six years or however long it was, the Lord says, now I want you to do this. It's like, oh God, you know. But as we step out in obedience, God right there taking care of us all the way through, see. And we're going to keep going that way. Yeah, your knees might be will. knocking together just like Paul's were. <laughs> <laughs> but Amen. still, if you do it, if you step out and do it, and believe me, we were... Our knees were kind of knocking together with that. The things that the yeah. Lord said, okay, now yeah. I want you to do this. Leave it all. Come follow me. That's right. Go where I tell you to go. Do what I tell you to do. Yeah, we were we were trembling just like Paul was when God sent him in. You know, and then, and then getting up in age, okay, we were like, God, you know, because we're going place to place in this motorhome, and it's like, well, in 2008, when we told this story, he told me to pray for our own place, so I did, and here we are. God gave us our own place, see? We don't have to, I mean, if God told us today, I want you to pull the motorhome out and go somewhere, we would. We would somehow do all that, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. You know, and it would be, we'd be obedient to God and do that. And then God, God could just as well give us another motorhome like he gave us this one, and then we would, you know, if he, and we would say, God, wow, you gave us this motorhome, it must mean you want us to go somewhere. See, he still does he, that. He, he, he can do that. Us out. He sends us out here, different right. places. Right. And boy, how do you know it when he sends you? You know it because it's like in the spirit, you are like, it's like the angels are going with you. Yes. And you're in warfare mode. Amen. And you know God's sending you. And we know when God is sending us somewhere. And see, over the years, you learn. You learn the difference in your own voice. The devil's voice or the Lord's voice. You learn the difference. And his voice is the only one we want to pay attention to. And that's the only one you need to pay attention Amen, to. Amen. Is the Lord's voice. Praise God. Now look at this part here in the way of Cain. For they have gone in the way of Cain, which Gil says, which was a way of envy. Envy. For Cain envied the acceptance of his brother's gift. And that notice which the Lord took of him. So these men envied the gifts bestowed on Christ's faithful ministers. Mm -hmm. And the success that attended their labors. And the honor that was put upon them by Christ. I mean, saints, this has happened to us. We'll go to a place that God sent us to a place. We'll go there and we'll start ministering the word. To people and people just they're like a magnet they want to be fed right 
And what happens? The leadership sees that and they get all envious and jealous, right? And then they, they'll push us out the door, see? And they start telling lies about you, telling the people, oh, they're false, they're this, they're that. No, instead of them just coming and receiving the truth too and being growing in grace. See, we're all supposed to be growing in grace together, okay? There's this division that comes down, and it's the way of Cain. It's evil. Yeah, you know, you're, you're giving a prelude to the devotionals. The evening oh. devotionals. <laughs> because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about this week. Right. Envy. Right. Those uh, archers of envy. Right. Enemies. Throwing the darts. Right. And the reason that they have the enemy, we're going to go into detail about that. Right. It's because they want it. They want the position. They want God to put a stamp on them of approval. But they don't want to walk the walk. That's the deal. They don't want to pay the price. That's the deal. So what do they do? They try to destroy the one that God has doing the work. Or destroy the reputation. Or whatever. Some kind of devilish thing. But see, God turns it all around. Just like he did in Cora's case. He sure did cause a lot of problems, didn't he, for quite some time. But then when the earth covered over him, was he causing any more problems? No. Was Not he at all. was he coming against Moses with his mouth? No. No. He was pretty silent after that. Amen. See, God's going to step in at some point. <laughs> Amen. And he's going to take care of business. Here's, here's what Gil, he continues this about Cain. Moreover, the way of Cain was a way of hatred and murder of his brother, which his envy led him to. So these men hated the brethren, okay, the false teachers, crept in unawares, okay, persecuted them unto death, as mm. well as were guilty of, of the murder of the souls of men by their false doctrine. That's what false teachers are souls guilty. Souls of men. They're guilty of the murder, murder. of the souls yeah. of men by their false doctrine. That's exactly right. To which may be added as another of Cain's ways. In consequence of the former absence from the presence of God or the place of his worship. So these men separated themselves and went out from the churches, forsook the assembling together with them, and so might expect Cain's punishment, to be driven from the face of God, yea, to be bid go as cursed into everlasting burnies, burnings. And then he says, and ran greedily, okay, the word says, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Balaam's error, Gil said, and this is so true, which he himself was guilty of was covetousness, or an immoderate love of money, okay? Which, as it is the root of all evil, is the bane of religion and the source of heresy and what the false teachers were greatly addicted to. And where it prevails, it is insatiable and not to be checked and stopped, as in these men, and is a damnable sin and excludes from the kingdom of heaven as well as is dishonorable to religion. Hence, such particular notice is taken of it, lest it be found in a minister of the word. Mm. This character exactly agrees with the followers of Simon Magus. The error which Balaam led others into was both idolatry and adultery. Revelation 2.14. What did Balaam do? money what did he, did he do which Balaam led others right. into into he he the error right which Balaam led others into which I these, tell you what this which, is, and then he says which these wow, go ahead. serious serious which these serious. false teachers were both guilty of themselves and taught others and indulged them therein and which both teachers and people ran greedily after Balaam is one of the four private persons who, according to the Jews, shall have no part or portion in the world to come. And they ran after it. Now, yeah. see, this is something I, I can't wrap my head around. <coughs> Why do they run after this, Lord? 
when they've heard the truth, they've listened to the truth for a long time and heard your word, how can they run after this over here? I'll tell you why. There's something already there. There's a tainted thing already there that's drawn them away. What does it say? You know, you can't blame that on God or anyone else. It's something in the person that's already there that's causing them to be drawn away into error. Right. And then the wickedness spreads. They draw others into it. It's like a rolling stone, man, downhill. That's right. The verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked, plucked up, up by, by the, the roots. roots. You know, they talk about the walking dead. There's many walking dead right that's now right, that's right. on this earth. The walking dead. And there's many Christians who are walking dead. dead. They, they go by the name Christian, but they're not true Christians. But they are the walking dead as well. That's a right. lot of them that's are. Right. That's right. You know, that's a label that everybody says I'm a Christian. Hey, our lives are going to prove if that's really true. Because what's in the heart is going to come out in the life. That's what the Bible says. It's going to be revealed. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. The debauchery, there's no fear. Just do it. Clouds without water. Mm. Hmm. Carried about every little wind of doctrine, every little thing that can blow me oh, that's over. Right, that's right. It's blowing me over. And the fruit withered, all dried up, without fruit. Twice dead. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now he's talking about the false teachers. Mm -hmm. I want you to see what Gil said. Look at this, what Gil says. Raging waves of the sea. False teachers are so called for their swelling pride and vanity. Which as it is, what prevails in human nature is a governing vice in such person. This is not, I don't think this is only for false teachers. It's for anybody. Y you know, one of the preludes, it seems, over the years that we have found to someone getting into error is their pride. That's right. And another thing is their vanity. That's right. Those two things are like preludes to error. Mm -hmm. And right here, he confirms that. He it's says, not just for false right, teachers. It's right. for anybody walking in the false way in error and pride and vanity. Look what he says. For knowledge without grace puffs up. See, And this shows that they had not received the doctrine of grace in truth. For that humble as yeah. also for their arrogance, boasting, and ostentation, and for their noisiness, their restless, uneasy, and turbulent spirits, for their furious and wrathful dispositions, as well as for their levity and inconstancy, and for their turpitude and filthiness, foaming out their own shame, wrathful words, frothy and obscene language, and filthy doctrines, and which express, expresses the issue of their noisy and blustering ministry, which ends in uncleanness, shame, emptiness, and ruin. Okay, wandering stars. They are called stars because they have the appearance of such. Okay, they have the appearance of such. As blaze for a while in seeming, li seeming light, zeal and warmth, and in fame and reputation, and wandering ones not comparable to the planets which go the regular course, but to fiery exhalations, gliding exhalations. Yeah. exhalations. Is that exhalations? Yeah. Yeah, exhalations. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? 
you know, breathing out fire. They, you know, and we've been accused of this as well. Yeah. You know, I have been, I know. But you know what? Hey, I'm going to speak it as the Lord gives it. That's right. You understand? That's right. I am not going to, uh, I mean, people can judge you by how you look, by how you sound, or whatever. But I'm telling you right now, and I'll stand for the truth. I know for a fact we preach the truth. Right. Okay? And I'm not ashamed of that. Okay? And I've told people over the years since we've been on the internet, if you hear me say something that is not true, according to the word of God, please contact me and tell me. If you if you say I'm your brother, I'm your sister, okay, you see what I'm saying? And you love God. If, if you hear tr untruth coming out of my mouth, then you will contact me and you will tell me that's not true. And let me show you in the word where you what you said is not true. Okay? But they don't do that because I'm speaking the truth. And the truth will cut us. I mean, it cuts me first, saints. It does. I'm telling you right now, God is working. Well, this church is today, it's, it's just like the Bible says, for the majority of the apart. Watch out. Don't put my little delicate foot down. That's right. I might get hurt. I might get upset. No. You know, don't talk too loud. Don't speak loud. Don't don't talk with authority. Don't mm -hmm. do that. Don't no. do that. Yeah. No. Make sure that you're all political correct about everything. Okay, let me give it. Let me give an example. We were in a place one time, and people could talk as loud as they want to talk. Okay, it didn't matter. Anybody could talk as loud as they want to talk, and say whatever they want to say, right? But when we started talking, the truth, what happened? Change. Bam. Mm -hmm. Stop it. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. And they even pull you aside and say, you know, if you just tone it down a little bit. You can sit there and blabber out all your false stuff and hurt the sheep, and then you want me to shut up? I'm not going to shut up, okay? Well, this is not our opinion, for one thing. That's right. You get that so much in this church of today that, well, that's just your opinion. No, no what we're no, speaking no. is not our opinion. It's the truth. This is the truth of God's Word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's the era that so many Christians get into today. Just love the truth. You tell God, I love the truth. God, I love your truth. Then he'll bring you the truth. See? That, that's, this is how God works. I'm telling you. You say to God, I love you, Jesus. He says, feed my lambs. Right? Yeah. Okay. You say, I love you, Jesus. He says, go over here. Lord, what do you want me to go over there for? See? This is how we respond to Jesus sometimes. Lord, what do you want you know, me to do that for? <laughs> also, when the Lord, you know, he will use <coughs> his people to point things out. You know, if there's things going on in life, if someone is being deceitful, if they're lying or whatever, but yet they call themselves by the name of Jesus Christ. And God has you go and point out to them. And what's their response? A lot of times their response is, my life is my own. It's none of your business. It's nobody's business but mine. Really? You call yourself a Christian. The Bible says your life is not your own. That's right. That's right. Your life you're, is you're not your a, own. You were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. Hallelujah. So Preacher, when someone sister, has that on. reaction, what are they revealing about their heart? Are they really right with God? Right. Right. Exactly. Because whenever... We're confronted, you know, if we're in er in error or doing something wrong or whatever, another brother and sister comes and points that out. We repent. And man. we, yeah, but if the I heart is it right, much, but we repent. If the heart is right with anybody in the body, now I'm talking about anybody in the body. If that person's heart is right, they're going to say, you're right, and mm. I repent. I repent. And forgive me, Lord, and you forgive me. You know. right. But if there's any other reaction other than that, the heart's not right. That's right. It's just not right. And you can hold that thing in your heart forever and not repent. And you're going to get hard when you do that. I'm just telling you that oh, right now. Man. Your God. heart will get hard when you do that. 
Lord, if you hold that in and you do not repent for it, you do not make restitution for it, your heart will get hard. Right. That's just what happens. Right. So much happened in the word because of what did Jesus say? The hardness of, of your their heart. heart. Amen. So that's another warning right, right there. Right. Now, let's let's pause right there. We're going to pick it up at verse 14 tomorrow. Uh, this is so important. It goes kind we of into another. We almost got there. Yeah, well, no, no. I, <laughs> I wanted to do 14 tomorrow because okay. we're going to go into another section. We might finish it out tomorrow. I don't know. But we're earnestly contending for the faith this year in 2019. God says you earnestly contend for the faith. Okay? You go and get the e-sword. If you don't have e-sword in your computer, go get it. Because in the, you might say, I use Bible Gateway. Well, okay, use Bible Gateway, but get eSword, okay? Because it has all the dictionaries right at your fingertips, right on your desktop. You don't even have to be online to use it. King it's, James. Yeah, version. King James. It comes with the King James yeah. and the Strongs. But then they have just a ton of commentaries that you can glean from. Once again, gleaning from them, okay? Because some of the commentaries you read, you'll go, oh, I don't know. You know, that was a different time or, you know, it just... They didn't didn't click with me that it was a revelation from God or something like that. So I don't receive that. But that's okay. But most of it, like John Gill, I received probably 95 or 99% almost of what he's written in the commentary on every verse of the Bible. Okay? But yet we're in a different age today. We're in a different time. I mean, if John Gill was alive today, he would absolutely be livid at what the church is doing. I'm telling you right now. He, he would be, man. He, he he would say this is definitely the end time. This is definitely the Antichrist is ruling right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what he would say. What's the address to the uh, e sword? It's e dash sword dot net, e sword dot net, and just go there and you will be blessed. And there, and there's not only I mean saints you can get they have you can get Bibles, commentaries, dictionaries, devotions. Graphics, reference books. I mean, there's a lots of reference books. I think these are all and, free downloads. Yeah, they're free. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like the reference books are are just so so awesome. You know, Arthur W. Pink book. You know, Absolute Surrender. Andrew Murray, uh, Antiquities of the Jews. Josephus. If you want to read the history of the of the Jewish nation, okay. I mean, that's there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, you can just so much. David, okay, by F. B. Meyer. The Psalms. Yeah, the Psalmist, you know. Uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, John Fox. Uh, I'm just telling you, there's so much there. And how to study the Bible, R.A. Torrey. I mean, there's there's a lot there. And I, I, I've got this one, Jeremiah, Priest and Prophet by F.B. Meyer. That's a powerful word there. He goes into the history of Jeremiah's time, and it's very telling because we see it today. And the church is so sad. The father is just weeping because he sees people, their own, their whole mind is just set on self in the church. And, you know, we need to be taking up the sword of the spirit and really contending for the faith this year. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, God is, is, he's fixing to whack this whole world. And Christians need to be preaching that. I mean, Whoever's preaching come, the gospel, uh, yeah, come now, yeah, come, come now. now, amen. Get right with God now. And, and and once again, I'm reading all these books to you. These are all free downloads, okay? And and so just check it out. Get an e sword, and really get studied up and prayed up, and and uh, put the word in your heart and mind, and the Holy Spirit will draw it right out of you. Hallelujah. And God can supernaturally put the whole Bible in your in your mind if you want Him to. I mean, just tell Him, Lord, I need you to do that. He did that and with that. Uh, that one, guy. one guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And God's able to do that as well. But I enjoy reading the Word and just getting into the Word, you know, and reading it and and seeing so many wonderful things and making notes and highlights and being blessed by God's Word. It's, it's just beautiful. And I'm never going to down it. It's the truth of God's Word. I'm, ha amen. Hallelujah. And I'm never going to call it names. I'm going to just love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is awesome. Amen. Holy. And you can download an MP3 of this <coughs> broadcast on this link. And also on the links, there is a, the link for the live broadcast. 
that's not only on this live broadcast, the King's Road, but the evening devotional. And you can download MP3s of all the uh, evening devotional and the archived radio broadcast, which are on this link. And also the evening devotional is 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And we'll be kind of following up on what we spoke about today a That's little right. bit. That's right. Praise God. So, you know, the Lord is really good, and it's really important for us to get grounded more so than we are even, so that oh, we won't be it. tossed to by the winds Amen. of adversity. That's right. See. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we need to be really rooted and grounded Praise in this him. time especially. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this message. Come on, Lord. I pray, Lord, that it has penetrated the hearts of the listeners. I pray you won't let them forget it, thank but you, will Lord. continue to bring it back to them during the day and even during the week thank and you, even Lord. during the months to come. Thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, I pray that you will draw your people into more of an intimate walk with you, to be closer to you, to be more established in you, Lord. Most of all, to love you more because everything really comes from that, loving you more. So, Lord, I just pray for all the people, and I pray you bless them today yes. with your truth. Thank you, Father. And if conviction is needed, I pray you bless them with conviction, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Amen. Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face shine upon you. The Lord our God, Jehovah, lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. And the Lord be gracious unto you today. Hallelujah. His name, authority, character, dominion, rule, and reign be in and upon your life today in this whole new year. And his blessed happiness be with you. Hallelujah. Every day, knowing that you are saved and filled with his spirit. And that he is leading you and carrying you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah.